So well, this is how Surf looks like once you've already downloaded it. So here, like we mentioned last time, is just you know the data sets you want to work on. You can upload data sets through here. Choose file, choose whichever one you want. Uh, with log tower data, we always have headers, so always keep mm -hmm. this as yes. And here you can give a name to whatever you want. So for example, um, we're just gonna go back. I already put Goa because that's what we're gonna understand and look at it. So I'm just gonna load that now. Cool. So once you click load, this is the first thing that pops up. I'm just gonna show you the entire screen once. Okay, so at the first stage here is column for IDs. So if you remember, we discussed last time column for IDs is basically what you want to merge on. Okay. So this will make a bit more sense later, but right now let's just keep this as candidate. So what I'm going to do later is once I have run a few algorithms, um, I'm going to change this from candidate to state name and you'll see what the changes are. Okay. Okay. These are some columns to show during merge in that sense key. Um, these are columns which you can see later when the merging process begins. So you can either keep them now and remove them later or remove them now, keep them later. Doesn't really make a difference. It just cleans up your screen. So I'm just gonna remove a few of them right now just to make it easier for us. Then in this case, uh, within a cluster, sort rows by. So a cluster will make a bit more sense later once I show you how to run an algorithm. But right now, I guess it's fine to just understand we can sort year, sort rows by within a cluster. So I'm going to keep this as year right now. And you'll see this makes sense again once you know what the cluster is. Okay. Continue. We basically run a bunch of algorithms when it comes to merging data. The ones we run are edit distance, compatible names, and then streaks. So I'm gonna go over them one by one and run them and show you what they mean. So right now I'm just gonna run an algorithm so that okay. we understand everything we talked about. And okay. then I'm gonna go back to the start, explain that a bit more and then explain the algorithms. Okay. okay. So in this case, just I'm gonna keep edit distance as zero. And you'll see what this means uh, later again, once I finish this, keep this the same. Uh, yeah, usually it makes sense to change this to all clusters. Again, this will make sense once you know how algorithms work. Okay. So, okay, now I'm just gonna run algorithm. Remember it's edit distance right now or okay. any distance zero or ED zero. That's what you use for like shorthand. And again, I'll explain filters also later. Okay, run algorithm now. So we've run the algorithm and you'll see this stuff pops out. Okay, right. it's just mostly candidates and yeah along with all the rows and columns we had so the columns we chose were state name all of these ones if you want you can just click column select here and you can rechoose them if you want so i'm just going to rechoose them once so you can see the come back yeah you see the back okay and i'm going to remove them again because it makes it easier for us right now okay great now you see these names over here and how they're all separated by a thick line. Right. So this, like both of them are one cluster and then both of these are one cluster and so on and so forth. So between every two clusters, you'll see like this select all mark is viewed, select till here, mark is till here. So this is what we meant by cluster, where it's basically once you run an algorithm, mm -hmm. um, the software works and according to the algorithm thinks which of them should ideally be the same candidate. So in this case, you'll see, let's see the first one. Uh, these two candidates, I mean, at first glance, don't really look the same because they're different mm -hmm. names, right? But not really. I mean, look at it a bit more closely. You'll see it's the same name. It's just the smaller components of the name have been like, you know, moved up and down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's like Atma Raman, Shambhu, Naik, Prataprao, Sardesai. It says Sardesai, Prataprao, Naik, Atma Raman, Shambhu. It's literally the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And now if you just look at this candidate, you'll see some information here. ID, you know, effective, mm. Indianized and tokenized. Right. So I'm gonna explain this one by one. ID is basically a unique ID we give to each candidate. And that's mm. the main purpose of serve. It is that eventually 
the same candidate has the same id right. so like for example in this case they are not the same candidate i mean sorry they are the same candidate but in our records they are actually separate so you see that's why they have separate ids also right so ideally we want to merge them so that they have the same id and the same candidate <laughs> So, so then if the yeah. ids are different then how does surf merge the two yeah. i mean wouldn't it recognize mm-hmm. that they're two different uh, sort of people mm-hmm. even though the because even the names they're sort of different and i just didn't mm-hmm. understand how uh, the software yeah. sort of understood to merge okay uh, if we see the last part which is tokenized right okay you see the tokenized atmarman sambhu naik pratap rao sardesai right okay so by tokenization basically what uh, uh, the software does uh, this is like um, something that comes from word processing mm-hmm. where you uh, reduce the basically you break up this name into smaller smaller words and okay. each of these small parts is one token so like the full name is the full name but it has uh, multiple tokens inside it which is atmaraman is one token sambhu is one token and mm. th- that's how it's been separated Hmm. so if you look at the next candidate you'll see that when it comes to tokenized again like they have the same tokens it's just they've been rearranged all right so the algorithm we apl- employed right now was edit distance zero right so in that case what it does is that it looks at all the tokens like the names with so instead of the names it mm-hmm. looks at the tokens right. and then it puts those names in the same cluster if they have the exact same tokens so okay. sure like the tokens may be up and down you know they may be rearranged but they have to be the exact same tokens and if this was as nayak pratap pratap rao mm-hmm. sardesai then it would not uh, cluster the two Correct. together right most probably yes for sure okay. yeah sometimes like you'll have names for different constituencies because why again they have the same tokens Hmm. Uh yeah, just keep in mind with elder distance 0, hmm. they have to be the exact same tokens just rearranged in different orders. Okay. So in this case, uh let's say we have this candidate, these two candidates in this cluster. Now we want to understand if they are the same candidate or not. So it makes sense to, you know, judge based on the rest of the available information we have. Right. So I guess the first thing is the sex, they're both male. Okay, that's good. then you look at the constituency the constituency that are actually different from each other hmm so we can't be certain that the same candidate or not hmm then you look at the election type one was an assembly election one was a general election so right now again we're not exactly sure if they're the same candidate the years are also i mean the years are not very far off 89 and 96 so it's possible that you know it is the same candidate the only thing is to understand because we're working with goa right now which is a very small state right so with two very similar names there's a high probability that it's actually the same candidate only and then you see the position also position 6 and 9 again not very far from each other i mean 6 and 9 is not very far but like 1 and 4 is very far from each other right. so in that case for example this candidate it's always one so i mean you'll notice this as you work with more and more data that candidates that win tend to usually win later like you know they always in top 3 like i guess this guy you see first second third okay so that's also what something surf does if it's a candidate who's sixth position no fifth position or ahead then they gray the name out because you'll see these are like black and popping right like these are a bit more gray and that's surf's way of suggesting that okay because the position was 6th or above then they may not be such an important person in the same case with position 1 they are uh, differently colored also so you know immediately yeah. okay this is an important candidate okay so in this case um they are most probably the same candidate again because it's a very small state so now we're going to merge them now to merge them you'll see you see these small boxes over here so we're going to click both of them check box both of them and then click on merge right over here so okay. uh, now merge all right so the first thing you'll notice is that what happened to the candidate it kind of vanished mm. but not really it just went a bit down so sometimes when you click merge and the page refreshes the 
what do you call it? the toolbar goes down or up a bit so it can yeah. get a bit confusing or disorienting but like it's worked it's worked for sure so uh, this, you had yeah. told me right that when we press column select it sort of greens the entire cluster so do you think that uh, one should do that before merging so that mm -hmm. like i have a track of uh, mm -hmm. you know the names that i did merge and where yeah. exactly they went mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't think you mean com column select, you mean mark as review. Oh yeah, I sorry, yeah, mark as review. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. I mean, it usually makes sense that once you're sure, okay, you mark as reviewed and then you merge. Okay. So, and then if you want to unreview, it just mark as unreviewed. And you'll notice that now they're the same candidate because there's only one checkbox here. Right. And also you'll see the same ID now. It's the exact same ID. So for all intents and purposes, now we know they're the same candidate. Can you tell me why you see when it comes to assembly number, like even though the years are quite close to each other, one is assembly number one, the other is assembly number 11. Like, I think the first thing that would pop into my mind was probably there were re-elections in the place. Um, no, I can give you a hint, look at the election type. Oh, okay. Right. This was assembly election and this is general election. Yeah. So this right. was the 11th Lok Sabha and yeah. this was the first assembly election in Goa. Right, 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 right. That's why you see both assembly number and year at the same time, because otherwise, if you just look at assembly number, it gets very confusing. And the poll number suggests if there has been a re-election, right? Yeah, correct. So poll number okay. is zero if, let's say, elections happened because the assembly that is general or the assembly election was dissolved. Right. And poll number one means it's the first bipole happening. Um, right. I think we can check, might be one down somewhere below, we can check. Yeah, over here, you see? So when bipoles happen, they become red also. Okay. So again, because we have, this is our software at SURF, so we've coded it this way that bipoles immediately or poll number anything more than zero automatically becomes red. Okay. So you can keep in mind that, oh, okay, this is like, uh, if the name pops up very quickly, despite the years being very close to each other, it's okay. Because like you right. see here, 2007, 2009, we didn't really have general elections in 2007, but it was a bipolar, so, you know, it's understandable. Um, now I'm going to show you how to unmerge stuff. Let's say you made a merge and you think you made a mistake. So this is pretty easy to just like uh, go back to. You click the candidate again and click unmerge right here. Okay. There you go. And otherwise, uh, when it comes to IDs, Surf already gives them IDs. So okay. you don't have to worry about that, you know? Okay. Um, when it comes to giving IDs, it just looks at IDs, which like um, IDs usually follow like a alphanumeric format. Right. So it usually assigns them a random ID between the smallest and the largest one. So this is pretty automatic. You don't need to worry about it. Let's say, for example, now you think like you want to merge a few candidates across two clusters. Right. Let's say this guy had the same name as these two. So in that case, you again click the candidates, click across groups. So the reason there's a separate across groups click is because otherwise you might merge two clusters by mistake. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'm going to show you in this case, if I click across, if I don't click across groups, it's not going to merge here. Look, it didn't merge. Right. But okay. I'm going to unmerge this now and merge all of them. These three across groups, you'll see all three merge now. You see. Okay. And it also combined the two clusters also because in this case, like these two names are actually the same as this name. So now they've all become one cluster. So now if I unmerge it, you'll see what happens. It still remains in the same cluster because you'd merge it before. Right. So when you merge across groups, you just have to be a bit more careful about this kind of stuff. So when it when it comes to pages, um, what happens is uh, it just automatically assigns pages based on you know how many candidates you have. So by that I mean that when we you see when we run different algorithms, the pages will change because this is only popping out clusters which it thinks are the same based on the algorithm we ran. So mm. if we run different algorithms, then they might be lesser or more. You can just click mark as reviewed here, it changes color. You can click select all to make it quickly quicker for you. 
you can on the other hand like mark review till here you will see all of them get reviewed now see all of it has been reviewed oh okay you can also click select till here again all of it has been selected and easy to like unselect also okay so i'm just going to merge these two now to just show you okay and these three and yeah they've been merged together like for example take this candidate again i'm going to show you the tokens you'll see Dwalika, Ram, Krishna, Sudin, Madha. And next one's gonna be exact same tokens, just a bit rearranged. So you see tokenized is a bit different from effective and Indianized. And that's because what happens is uh, Indian languages, I mean, there are always some translation or transliteration errors. Mm. So with, uh, what happens is the first one, that is the effective one is just the data itself. The second one is the Indianized one, where you know you make a few changes in the spelling to fit more to what they may have been wanting to say. For example, in this case, you'll see um, um, Krishna, right? Mm. Is there a difference between Krishna and Krishna? No, there isn't. Okay, I guess in this case there isn't a difference. But let's say if you work with other files, let's say from Tamil Nadu, where R and L sometimes switches, right. then you may notice it over there. A uh, huh. common one is, for example. Krishna becomes Krishna, like K-R-I-S-N-A, K-R-I-S-H-N-A. You know, right. that's just like a, the way we speak. So, right. yeah, the eventual goal is that, you know, depending on languages, um, you can sort it even better. The next thing is if you click on a candidate, then yeah. it will Google it for you. So like, I'm going to show you this one. Yep, there you go. It Googles it for you. So this is a good way to again check, you know, if that's the can if they're the same candidates. So for example, this guy and this guy, and you see the colors are changing slightly. So there you go. It usually helps that way, you know, to just understand and helps you with Googling stuff because eventually sometimes you do need to Google stuff. Constituency name, I guess you can also click it. Um, okay, it doesn't always work. Well, it's left click, so just right click it, open link in new tab. And it will also show you on Google Maps what the constituency is. There you go. Mm. So I guess not always, it doesn't always work with left click. So you can just right click and open link in new tab because these are also technically hyperlinks. Right. There you see. So like in this case, the previous one we saw was over here, I think somewhere. And this one is here. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to test you now. Uh, let's take this, this cluster, do right. you feel this is the same candidate? They have the Prabhu, wait, no, the last one, ha, I mm -hmm. think it's the same, yeah. I mean, the names are the same and then right. uh, you have so many numbers, they're from the same constituency, they're from the mm -hmm. same party and mm -hmm they're the same gender so it makes sense mm -hmm. for them to be the same person yeah. correct and the years are also not very far off right these are in fact like back-to-back -back elections right so yeah they merge them all together right what about these two candidates this one and this one the desai again like krishna and krishna there's mm -hmm. one s that's like in the spelling yeah. there's a difference correct then but I, I guess you'll see in the tokenized they have the same spelling because you see they both D E S A I A. Yeah. Sorry, Desai, like the last word, Desai, and again Desai. So again, this is because they've been tokenized. And as per serve, they have the same tokens, just rearranged. Right. They're from two different constituencies. Right. And, and ID means independent. Fifth and seventh, like their ranks also. Mm -hmm. Ranks yeah. are uh, almost similar, I think, in that sense. Mm -hmm. But the constituency sort of arranged uh, numerically in terms of two and one would be closer to each other. So usually something? they are. Usually okay. they are, but we can check it. So I'm just going to check them. Open link in new tab. Open link in new tab. Usually they tend to be. We can just check to be sure. So this one is here. And these ones are a bit far off i guess this one's here yeah you can see it here perinam is here and this one is here so i mean i guess they're close to each other actually 
How do you figure that out, like whether they are close to each other or not, especially in like a small state? Is there like some other way to, uh, like you know, check the person, like you said, to go on the Mainita uh, website mm-hmm. and sort of Google? Oh, yeah, you're right. Like the... You can do that. You're right because both candidates are after 2003. So you're right. It's a good idea to go on Mainita as the website for Association of Democratic Reforms and check. Right. So, good call. Good call. Let's do that. All right. Um, this is the 2017 candidate. So here, usually see everything that's required, party, son, daughter, wife, whatever. In this case, it's probably son of, I imagine. Krishna Rao V. Prabhu Desai. Also, age address is given. A lot of information is given, so it's pretty yeah. useful. And the other one you can check. Oh, they are the same candidate. See, the yeah. father's name is the same. And age also matches. 61 here, 90 yeah. years to 70. So you're right, they are the same candidate. So... In this case, we weren't sure, but now we're pretty sure. So then right. we merge the two together. So I guess you're right that I guess for small states, usually if people stand for elections with similar names, even if it's not super close to each other, they're probably the same. Uh, the next thing I want to show you here, see this candidate, Carmo Rafael Andre Jose Pagado. Uh, you see, we're quite sure this is the same candidate, but the constituency names are different, but right. not really. Like they're yeah. both. Saint and Santo Andre only. It's just yeah. because you know they're a bit far apart, so names are slightly different. The next one I'm going to show you is Edit Distance Two. Right. So to do that, you can just press back or click on this icon here, Surf. I'm going to press Surf here to your homepage. All right. These are a bunch of other files we had, so they all come and drop down. I'm going to go go test, load. Okay, now actually what I'll do is I'll show you what happens if we choose column for ID as a state name. Yeah. Okay, you'll see it's super messed up. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna again sort by year. Actually, no, I won't sort by year also. You'll see what happens. Continue, edit distance zero. No changes and... Does zero. it take the token as the state name? Is that what yeah, happens? Exactly, um, exactly, you're right. So in this case, it's like super messed up now. Yeah. This makes no sense. What we want to merge is based on candidate. Right. So if you choose party, it will choose party. If you choose constituency, it will choose constituency. And that's why I guess a good way of putting it across is that whatever you choose as the column for ID, that's where the tokenization happens. Right. Okay. Another thing I guess you could notice was that uh, when you have candidates in the same cluster, okay, but running from the same year, the years turn red. So like okay. in this case, you'll see, because we're actually tokenizing Goa. Mm-hmm. So all the years are red. Because oh, okay. it makes yeah. no sense. Yeah, very weird. Yeah. Yeah. If I run at a distance two now, and you'll see something else. Okay. Load. And we're going to change this candidate now. Now I'm going to, and you must have also seen before that it wasn't sorted by year. The years were also way off everywhere. Mm-hmm. If we sort by year, then now this will make sense to you. Within a cluster, we sort our entries by year. But a distance two includes one and two, but zero only is zero itself. Now run algorithm. Okay. Uh, now, okay. These three candidates are coming the same because we actually merged these three candidates before. Mm. So that's why they're not coming separate. So that's one thing about surf that once you merge the candidate, then it's merged. You don't right. have to re-merge it every time for different algorithms. So you can be quite mm. sure, quite sure that okay, I merged them, so like this is done. Look at these two candidates. Okay. Mm. Uh, this time we put edit distance two, and look at their tokens now. Okay. Mm. So in this case, what happens with any distance two is that there can be a change of up to two letters in the tokens. Okay. Okay. So in the previous one, we had the same tokens, like you notice for these guys, they should be the same tokens, just like rearranged differently. Right. Whereas with any distance two, so that also includes one. It means that, you know, uh, I guess in this case, they're very similar, but there's a difference of H over here. Right. 
So in that case, we, what we can do is like the tokens can be rearranged, but there can be a difference of two letters in the tokens, up to two, so one or two. But then wasn't uh, in the last case, Desai and Desai, mm -hmm. like there was mm -hmm. a difference in token in that sense, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like there was an S missing. So, or wouldn't that right. count as a difference in token? So in that case, they were the same tokens, right? D D E S A I. In yeah, this right. case, I think you probably also see they should be the same tokens, but uh -huh. it's coming separate because we actually didn't merge it. So I guess um, it may be a bit difficult to find. Let's see, maybe this one. Yeah, you see, Kashi Nag and Kashi Ram. Hmm. You see, like in this case, there's a difference of two tokens. Kasinath, so you see the tokens at the end. Don't look at the name again, Kashinath. It's Kasinath at the end. K-A-S-I-N-A-T. And this mm. will be Kasiram. Yeah. K-S-I-R-A-M. Mm. So the difference is of two tokens, where in this case you have N and T. In this case, you have R and M. Okay. So if we run edit distance zero, this would probably not come in one cluster then wouldn't it make sense to work on like edit distance zero algorithm rather than mm -hmm. edit distance two because wouldn't that be more accurate in that sense so we do both actually we do edit distance zero first and then edit distance two okay okay so we do zero first because that helps us catch usually the very obvious ones right and then edit distance two to catch the less obvious ones and that's okay. why i mentioned before edit distance two does not include zero so okay. two includes one and two and not zero, whereas zero is just zero. So yeah, we run both. I'm going to show you the next one, which is compatible names. Okay. Um, go to load candidate, keep this the same, yeah. compatible names. Okay. To give an example, let's say uh, uh, you have a candidate, you know, MK Gandhi. Right. Okay. And where it's just M dot K dot Gandhi. Right. And somewhere else, it's his full name is told. So Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Mm. So if you run edit distance 0 and 2, they would not come under the same cluster. Right. But what compatible names does is it looks for, uh, I mean, candidates with the same first token. Okay. Yeah. So in that, um, this will make a bit more sense later. So in that case, MK Gandhi and Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi will come the same. So I'm just going to show you token overlap two here. Okay. Um, you can usually uh, let this be the way, you know, keep this as 200, no difference, an algorithm. Okay. Uh, again, these are all names which we should have merged before. So the procedure we follow is that you do ED0 first, then ED2. Hmm then move to compatible names. Okay. So in this case, like ideally, this should have also been merged and that's why they're coming up here. So it's a bit confusing, but I guess this is an example you can look at here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You'll see KV Janar, yeah, and KV Pandana Janandan. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, you know, it gets a bit confusing and that's why the short forms get taken into account. So this is tokenized KW Janardan. And this one is token is KD Pandarina Janardan. So I guess when you have to, uh, compatible names too, it looks to see that at least, you know, uh, the last name in this case is similar, or in this sense that, you know, at least uh, the first letter of different tokens is the same. So yeah. there's KV here, KV also here. And it's also taking DP because probably DP is also somewhere here. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to show you the next one. Compatible names four, usually, again, we run this after compatible names two. So by then, obviously, you should have made a bunch of merges. So okay. usually, you know, you don't really have many merges by then. So token frequency, you can just leave this as 200. Uh, even I'm not 100% sure what this does. But I think like it's 200 and default, so I guess just leave it. Yeah, they're given examples also. Allow initials here. Yeah. If checked, right. allow partial words and initials from one name to the other. M Gandhi slash with Mohanas Gandhi. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but 
it's usually the case that compatible names four is just compatible names two but in the previous case where i looked for only at least two uh first like the first series of token tokens being same now it mm -hmm. looks for four so it's a bit more powerful and that's also why when it comes to compatible names four you usually have very spurious merges like look at these two names mm -hmm. you know they're definitely not the same but yeah. it's probably because we see the first four letters with a k s u where these are also AKS. AKSU, yeah. So that's how compatible names four works. And that's why with compatible names four, we run it after merging quite a bit because it gives you a lot of uh, spurious merges. So there's two kinds of filtering. You can either filter over here or you can filter uh, after you run the algorithm. Okay. The difference is if you run filter over here, then it won't run the algorithm. It will run the algorithm only on the candidates which have a filter. Okay. So for example, if you run position in this case equals to one, and then we run algorithm, you'll see. It's running an algorithm where, you know, like in every case, there must be position one at least. So these have already nice. been merged. Uh, these have already been merged, that's why they're popping up. But if you see the unmerged ones, there's always candidates one everywhere. Right, you see? If you run filter before running algorithm, it just runs the algorithm only for that filter. Right. So that's not a good idea. And you should run, that's why filter only after you run the algorithm. Okay. So I'm going to show you what that means. I'm going to rerun it once. Oh, Keep this the same. Here. I'm gonna keep my distance two only. I'm gonna remove the filter here. An algorithm. Again, look for candidates which haven't been merged. So in this case, you'll see we have candidates here which are position three also. Whereas before we didn't have that. We had candidates only who were one position. Right. So in this case, because we ran the we haven't run a filter, it's run the algorithm on everything. Now if we run a filter. You'll see position equals one. And we're going to change here clusters to show clusters with one or ro more rows matching filters. Okay. So in this case, what's happening is um, it's going to show you every cluster where at least there is a position once, at least once coming somewhere. Right. right. So you'll see. And it runs the algorithm for everything. Before, you wouldn't have come across this position because there was only one and this wouldn't have happened. And uh, how exactly like do you use the logic of filter to sort of make your work mm -hmm. easier? I mean, how would, um, you know, like for example, searching for the first position sort of help you to understand whether mm -hmm. the person is the same candidate or not? So it could be, for example, I mean, in this case, we have very small data, so it's very manageable. But let's say you have, you know, data which goes on to like, a hundred rows or something, a hundred pages or something, Right. you know, then it's usually a good idea to run a filter so that your work becomes easier. In that case, let's say you run position one clusters with one or row, more rows matching filters so that you get those candidates first who won because they're important and candidates, mm -hmm. you know, who came like seventh, ninth or 26th, they don't come because you don't care about them right now. So for example, um, you want to look at data which is only for a particular constituency, you know, Santa Cruz or Panaji. Hmm. And it makes it easier to work that way. So it's usually like a good way of just cleaning up your workspace. So then finally the file structure. So once you saved it, like for Windows, it usually comes over here. C users. Um, I think I can show it to you from scratch actually. It'll be easier. So usually you have it somewhere here. C yeah. users. Like you should have the same, then your username, mine is on the Agarwal one. And here you have it here, serve data. Yeah. So this is some other work I'm doing. So this is the file structure. Here's some other files I'm working on. And you'll see whenever you make a merge, it automatically saves it. So let's mm. take, for example, this case, date modified timestamp is five, five, you know, for today's date. Now I'm going to make a merge and you'll see the timestamp changes. Um, let's say I merge these three together. Watch. Okay. You see the timestamp change to 512. Yeah. 
so it makes it says automatically uh, every time you make a merge or make an unmerge so that was quite quite useful and then whenever you finish it this is the final file which you give to people you can also click on help where it just tells you a bit about surf and a bit about your current data set so you can see for example the algorithm you're doing is mm. ed2 you know you have 183 groups clusters unique ids everything and this is just a bit about surf let's say you know you're working on something and you're not sure about it you want to come back to it later mm -hmm. so you can select it and press here flag for review okay All right so click it and you'll see in the and file what structure does it do? like yeah you'll see the file structure over here there's a new file now called dot tbr okay so it wasn't there before you can look at the timestamp and you click it it will just have the two things you've clicked so you know let's say you want to come back to this stuff later right. this is a pretty pretty helpful method okay all right so let's say for example you're working on something and you're not sure if it should be uh, merged or not or you're too tired at that moment you can just uh, flag for review and come back to it later right and the cool thing about surf is let's say these are the merges we've made if you log if you close surf it's fine okay as long as the file is still stored there so i'm gonna go back to surf now uh, if i load the data site it's still going to be in the same place as last time i won't have to do it in just one sitting right so it's a good way of saving stuff you see the same candy has already been merged yeah. So as long as the data set is uploaded and you haven't deleted the data set, you'll be at the last place you were. 